Welcome to the AME Food Safety Show. Listen to that music. It gives me hope. There, over the rainbow, we up high. I can never remember that second part. Isn't it beautiful to think that somewhere over the rainbow, there's a beautiful world waiting for us? Here's a challenge. You have to make it beautiful because a lot of people out there are trying to do it cheaper, faster, and better in their opinions and make more money. Let's start with our first presentation. Fruit ripening chemicals. All you people out there that didn't know that food producers place chemicals into the products to make them better and more economical for them and more dangerous for you. Wake up. If I could tap you on the head, I would. Right now, one, two, three, fruit ripening chemicals. First slide. Let's look at that first example out of India. And you know what? The Southeast Asian people are wonderful people. Some of the things they do are absolutely horrendous. Some countries, and you see that little man holding his chemical composure, and on those, those ripening fruits, and he's trying to accelerate it. The treated products that he's, you're looking at right there are mangoes. They're actually adulterated under American standards. Here's the challenge. Those mangoes taste kind of sour, but they look great. It ripens that yellow color of the fruit. They ripen, parentheses, with a, cal a chemical called carbine, uh, calcium carbide. That's against the law in the United States, but we still use it. You see that hand in the middle? Would you like that person touching your food prior to you getting it? Well, I guarantee you, many of those types of hands, and look at those fingernails, aren't they wonderful? are touching the fruit that you're eating if, if you don't really know where it's from and you don't really take care of yourself. The whole axiom of the AME Food Safety Show is that you wake up yourself. You monitor your own consumption. Look at those bananas. Don't they look great? There's a reason they look great. There is a cadre of managers scheming and scamming and planning to make that product look good so you'll buy it, even if it's good for you or not. The sellers of some of these intermediary handlers of food will take cheap, immature bananas from damaged trees and place them in a box together with some carbide blocks. They'll ripen in about 24 hours, or else they'll spray it. They'll dip the products in calcium carbide mixed with water. All of those are scams. All of those are evil. All of those are against what your best interests are. I hope you understand after this short segment that there are middlemen out there who are responsible and yet they're unidentifiable. Yes, they're scraping a meager living. Next slide. Oh, Andy, what do you know? I'm not eating that from India. I'm not eating that from Mexico. I'm not eating that from Guatemala or Honduras or Nicaragua. I got some news for you people. You are. Americans are eating their garbage. And they, why? Because they want American dollars. Look at the chart on the left, briefly. It's from the USDA and the Foreign Agricultural Trade of the United States Group out of the USDA. And what is it saying? It's saying that food of a variety are being sent to the United States in exponential growth. Exponential means two, four, six, eight, not arithmetic, which is one, two, three, four. Look at that giant container vessel on the right. That's very characteristic of how the food arrives. Can the government, who's supposed to be protecting you, search every single container of every single container ship of every single country that comes in here? And that's a yes or a no. And let's look at the facts before I have you answer that. And all you wonderful liberals that just want the world to be wonderful, don't look over the rainbow. Look at that container ship. These unsaturated hydrocarbons, particularly acetylene, ethylene, etc., they promote ripening, induce color changes very effectively. Next slide. Andy, we pay taxes, billions of dollars and billions, for these government inspectors to protect us. And they're good people. They're just waiting for their retirement. They show up every day. Oh, they love us. Really. Let me look at that argument real quick. When you see that sticker that says USDA inspected, what does that mean to you? That means everything that inside that product, you should just eat the, the lining of the bag. 
It's so, look at these wonderful government employees. They're just really diligent. And look at those inspectors on the right. They're just doing their jobs. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe you're one of them. And why don't you wake up and learn something? The requirements for food importation, yes, all those government agencies, look at them. FDA, USDA, FISIS, AMFIS, EMS, FAS, DOT, CBP, EPA, DOC, NMFS, PTO. What does all that mean? There's a guy waiting for a retirement or a female, and the only th two things they really know is when's their retirement date and how many vacation days they have, and then they got to go to a conference, then they got to get training, and then they got to sit there and listen to another meeting before they can actually do their jobs. The inspectors are supposed to ensure the safety of the na nation's meat, poultry, and egg products. Do they do it? That's a good question. Let's look at the facts. They're using primarily their human senses, their smell, their visual, their training, their education, their experience, which is, I'm sure is wonderful and impeccable. But what they're doing is, is prior to receiving a government certification, do they receive bribes? <gasps> no, Andy, that's a sin or a crime. Yes, they do, unfortunately. There's a percentage of people who do. Let's look at what the actual numbers are for their actual work performed considering the work volume. 1.3 percent of all imported fish, vegetables, fruit, and other foods are inspected. There are very few rejections as compared to the volume that's coming into the United States. So if I was to tell you that 99 percent, plus or minus, of the products that you're eating from imported countries are not inspected, that means a person, a human, authorized to reject it, is looking at it, would you eat it? That's all. Just a statistical fact. You do the math. 1.8% in 2003, in 2007, 1.3, 1.1 in 2008. What does that tell you? The numbers of, of food items inspected is going down. Why? Because the budget's getting cut. It. And because we have more participants coming in to the United States looking for the almighty dollar over. Next slide. All right. Don't forget there's a distinction between government inspection, somebody looking at it, and testing, government testing. That's going beyond the human sensory capacities and looking at it, scientific instrumentation and scientific protocols to prove, to come up with data, irrespective of the protocol, that the product is either contaminated or not. What does that mean? Oh, Andy, but these people are so experienced. They look at it. They just know. I'll tell you what happened to me. I was offering the U.S. federal government, USDA, at LAX airport scientific detection using that instrument that that lady on the right is using. And you know what they told me? They had little Asian people bent over smelling agricultural products coming in. And he said, Andy, we can't afford it. We pay these people from Southeast Asia $10 an hour, and that's all we can afford. We can't afford scientific instruments. That's what I was told. That's my experience. You can countermand that with your experience. But sensory human inspection versus scientific instrumentation methods don't correlate. Just because something smells horrible, what will happen is, quite often, the violators will change the chemistry so it doesn't smell. It's not aromic. The percentage of samples tested is even worse than the visual inspection. Does that frighten you? It should frighten you. And it's not risk-based. What does that mean? I take the most high-risk products coming in, and I give more vigilance to those. So those that aren't as high-risk-based, I give less. That's the nature of budgeting. Next slide. Oh, Andy, but you know what? We have these dedicated city, county, and state workers, and they happily waltz along and help us make the food safe wherever it goes. Really? That's what you think? Look at the person on the left. He's got a temperature gauge. Oh, that's helpful. Look at the person in the middle. He's got a checklist, and he's visually inspecting, primarily for temperature, looking for bugs at restaurants. Look at that person. She's using a temperature gauge. They use the simplest, easiest equipment in those agencies, unless the federal government funds to buy the equipment, give them the training, and give them the assays or the test equipment and test chemistries to run. But foodborne outbreaks are mainly what they're interested in. If a thousand people get sick, oh, okay, I guess I'll get out of my cubicle, miss my meeting, shorten my vacation days to go and check it out. I'll just count the number of dead people. Wonderful. They'll collect samples, and then they'll send it to a federal state lab. Or if they're lucky, like here in Fresno County, I actually sold them one of our units, but I had to come frequently to, to see if they were qualified to use it. Many of them 
I have minimal training, so guess what? I question a lot of their results, but they are in support of federal help. If you are a true American, looking at the federal government for help is a challenge for me as an American. Next slide. Andy, we can have legislation, those important legislators will sponsor and really monitor the government agencies to make sure they're doing their jobs. That sounds good, politically. How does that really rubber, how does that rubber hit the road? Well, if you look at the USDA, which is the, one of the largest, I used to live in D.C., it's one of the largest buildings in D.C., and the U.S. FDA. Those two agencies are, we call it in Spanish, burlido. They're rotten with industry experts who now supervise government programs. I'm not talking about lifetime government workers, GS9s, 10s, and 11s. I'm talking about the federal executive type appointees. Now, right now we have the Democrats. I'm sure they love everybody with all their progressive politics. But we have a lot of people from Monsanto, giant food companies, running those government agencies. Now, you look in the middle, people with cowboy hats and come to your rotary meetings, those are our politicians. They respond pragmatically and unfortunately to the largest donors. But look on the top right-hand side. I talked about this before, country of origin labeling. What is that? If it were honest, it would say something like this. I found this very humorous and yet very horrible for consumers. Country of origin from cattle born in Mexico. Oh, wonderful. They, they feed their cows sewer water. Isn't that great? Raised and slaughtered in the United States. Is that supposed to help me? So retailers, such as grocery stores, supermarkets, club warehouses, and we buy everything from Costco because they really watch it. Look at the country of origin labeling and make your own decisions. I'm not telling you, oh, you want me to avoid it? No. Use your brains. Decide whether or not you want to buy fresh produce or meat from Nicaragua. So what about tissue from animals? Beef, veal, pork, lamb, goats, and chickens. Wild, shellfish, all of those things come from producers. You have to wonder what their theory is on the germ theory. Next slide. Consumer watch, I'm almost done. Look at all those products on the far left. Look at all of the listings there. Look at that room in the middle. What is that? It's a ripening room. What does a ripening room mean? That they put a gas in there and it has ethylene that helps it ripen and make it look really good so you'll pick it off the shelf and take it home and think, oh, this is going to be great. My children will be safe and happy. The bottom line is that there are commercial products which will help you extend the life of that product and help you ripen it in a more humane way, a safer way. Next slide. These are my suggestions, people. Research all food outbreaks before you run off all happy and progressive off to the grocery store or a farmer's market. Buy products from established organizations. Why? And remember where you buy things, because you might have to sue them if your kid dies or needs a kidney transplant. Store the products in appropriate locations or prim primarily interested in temperature. And wash, clean, inspect all food products, especially produce and fruit. Here's my last plea to you as me, a voice on a computer, to you as somebody who's actually eating. Wake up, think about the food you're eating. Thank you very much.